everybody! Day three of three of going live to talk about Read Aloud. And today, since we had such a great conversation Tuesday and Wednesday about really practical ways to choose books, plan Read Alouds, I thought today I'd expand the scope a little bit and talk about purpose um, and why we choose Read Aloud and think about what other lesson structures we might have at our disposal to help us with similar or complementary goals. So um, I've mentioned to you before that I'm going to be drawing from this book, Teaching Reading Across the Day, which is my, my newest book. Um, I published it with Corwin. I'm really grateful to the team at Corwin for helping to get the word out about the book. And I'm grateful to all of you for joining this page to learn more about it and, um, and about me and my work more generally. Um, so the, the book is 11 chapters and the um, bulk of the book focuses on nine lesson types, and you can see these nine lesson types here. Um, Read Aloud is the first chapter, and that's what I've been talking about. And we also have a chapter on phonics and spelling, vocabulary lessons, focus lessons, shared reading lessons, close reading lessons, guided inquiry lessons, reader's theater lessons, and conversation lessons. Um, I mentioned on the first day how you could definitely use Read Aloud together with conversation lessons. They make a nice duo. So you teach your Read Aloud, and then that sets the kids up to have really rich conversations either a whole class conversation or to pair off or to work in small groups like little book clubs off of the read aloud um, and i also think that we can think about um, you know one general purpose for read aloud is to make sure that we're giving kids experience and exposure with grade level text we talked about that yesterday how we you know this is a heavy support structure we're, we're doing the reading we're pausing we're pre-planning pausing places to do our think alouds and to invite the kids to talk to one another about the text and so because of that we can get kids on grade level or even above grade level text um, experience and exposure. And there's two other lesson types in that list of nine that I just read to you that I think um, serve a similar function. They serve to help us support kids with grade level texts or beyond grade level text when the text is more complex than what they could read independently. And those are close reading lessons and shared reading lessons. So I thought I could just talk a little bit today about the differences between them. And I'd love to hear from you all. Welcome everybody that's joining. I'd love to hear from you all, um, you know, if you use these different lesson types I wanna talk about, and um, if so, when and, and where. These nine, by the way, I feel like if you know these nine and you know them really well, you can use them to teach ELA, you could teach science, you can teach social studies. They work really well across content anytime you're supporting kids with knowledge, vocabulary, um, and reading skills and strategies. Um, okay, so, so read aloud, we already talked about. Read aloud is teachers holding the book, teachers doing the reading, teachers pre-planned places to pause, think aloud, turn and talk, stop and jot, engage the kids in, in um, interacting with the text. Close reading, close reading is similar in that we can take a complex text, something that's harder than what kids can handle independently, Often the excerpt is shorter because we're gonna pause even more than we do in a read aloud. In a close reading, I also will have the kids either have their own copy or I'll have a displayed copy so everyone can look at it. And we're often doing deeper analytic work in close reading. So read aloud, we might be just pausing and asking kids to summarize what they read so far or to define a quick vocabulary word, or we could do deeper stuff too. What's the theme in the story? I know what are we thinking about the character and how they've changed in a close reading lesson i'm pausing more often and deep getting kids into those deeper levels of meaning in the text um, so looking at figurative language and thinking about why the author chose that particular um, you know phrase for this to, to represent this idea um, i'm looking carefully at um, you know symbolism and mood and tone right so i'm doing like the deeper comprehension work often with close reading um, and the reason i can do that is because the text is in front of them and we could do a lot of rereading and careful looking um, i could i could direct the kids to do some of their own reading like read the next paragraph and let's think about something i could direct them to read together in partnerships even reading out loud together or i could even read parts of it out loud to them and in that way it looks a lot like a read aloud um, so close reading, shorter amount of text usually, deeper analytic thinking, but still on or above grade level text. So that's something that's similar. And I could do some reading out loud of the text to them to give them that extra support. 
Okay, the third one I wanna talk about, also a great choice for when I'm supporting kids with complex grade level texts is shared reading. So shared reading is a chance for us to read chorally, so all our voices are reading at the same time, or echo reading where the teacher reads as a model and the kids repeat that same section. And in a shared reading lesson, all eyes are on the same physical copy of text. So I'm not gonna distribute a mini copy to everybody. Instead, I'm gonna have a displayed copy. So it could be that I had something projected on my smart board, a digital text on my smart board. Or it could be that I've put something under a document camera and everyone's looking at it. Or it could be that I have a poem or a song written on a piece of chart paper. We're all looking at the same physical copy of text. And the reason that's important is that we're gonna do a lot of reading together and if everybody has their own copy, especially with younger children, I find kids lose their way. Some kids read ahead, some kids aren't really with you, where are we again? So when all eyes are on the same physical copy, the teacher can direct attention to the exact line, you know, by either sweeping your finger or a pointer underneath the line that you're reading together, or by pointing in the margin and asking kids to read along with you. So shared reading, again, because we're giving a lot of support, I'm reading along with you, or my voice can drop out and I'm asking you to read, I'm pausing and asking you to think or turn and tell your partner what you just read, right? I'm there to help you. I hear when you're mumbling through the, a word, I'm pausing, I'm asking you to go back, let's decode that, let's read it carefully. I hear when things get choppy and I ask you to go back and let's smooth that out. Um, so, so in that way, because it's supportive, I could use a text that's harder than what kids could read on their own. Uh, but because I'm doing a lot of oral reading, um, reading chorally and read, reading echo reading, oftentimes I choose shared reading when I really wanna work on their fluency, um, when I wanna work on foundational skills, like applying phonics lessons to connected text reading. Um, and of course we are gonna do a little bit of comprehension work in, a, in every shared reading lesson as well. Um, so shared reading, um, another option, helping kids with grade level texts, but more of like a fluency spin on it than, uh, or foundational, skills spin on it um, than the close reading, which is a deeper comprehension, or read aloud where I'm doing all the reading out loud to them. So there's key differences between them, but what, like if we were to make a Venn diagram with the three circles, what unites them all together are there three different options for you to choose from to support kids with text that might otherwise be too hard for them to read on their own. And I'm thinking right now about a lot of you who are adopting new core programs and how you know, a lot of the texts that are in those core programs are written at grade level. Or even those of you that are um, in grades where your kids have to take standardized tests and maybe you're gonna do some test practice and preparation at some point to help them. The texts are written at grade level. These are three options to use to, um, to support kids with reading those texts and, um, you know, have slight differences between them, but, but all will be really supportive and really helpful. So I'd love to hear if you have any questions today about read aloud, close reading, or shared reading as three options. Um, and I do invite you to check out those three. Um, there's complete chapters about all of them, how to plan them, um, tips for responsive teaching, uh, tips for text selection, and then a full length video of me teaching in classrooms to show what those different um, types look like. And like I said, because this is called Teaching Reading Across the Day, one of the other things I'm trying to teach in this book is how this looks in science and social studies as well as English language arts. So I've got video footage of me in science classrooms and social studies classrooms as well as English language arts supporting kids. Just checking the box, chat box to make sure I haven't missed anybody. It doesn't look like anyone has any questions today. So I just wanna tell everybody that I hope you have a great rest of your summer and those of you going back to school have a wonderful school year. Take care everybody.